Topic 5.6, Part 1, Chromosomal Inheritance, Sex Determination. Here are some of the questions we'll be addressing in this topic. How is sex determined in mammals? How is sex determined in birds? What is temperature-dependent sex determination? I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that interaction and feedback is what leads to deep, substantial learning. We're so sure of that, that we provide a money-back guarantee that comes with your subscription. How is sex determined in mammals? We've seen this image before. It's a karyotype. It shows all of the homologous pairs paired up. Chromosomes 1 through 22 are called autosomes. They're paired homologous pairs. They're the same in chromosomal males and chromosomal females. But the last pair are called the sex chromosomes. Females have two X chromosomes. Males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. Unlike the autosomes, chromosome pairs 1 through 22 in humans, the X and the Y are quite different from one another. For one thing, unlike those homologous pairs, they don't cross over and swap pieces of DNA. The X is a normal chromosome. It has a variety of alleles related to various non-sex relating functions. That includes immune function, vision, blood clotting, and so on. The Y has a region that's called SRY. It's indicated by this yellow bar over here. And that initiates the development of the testes during early embryonic development and later on production of testosterone, which winds up differentiating the body into its male form. During fertilization, it's the sperm that determines the chromosomal sex of the zygote, which becomes the embryo, which becomes the baby, which becomes the person. The males, which have their 22 autosomes and then an X and a Y chromosome, during meiosis will pass on either an X chromosome or a Y chromosome. Because even though they're not truly homologous, they will get separated, just like how the other homologous pairs get separated. The egg has two X chromosomes, so every single egg cell is going to have the X chromosome. If the egg is fertilized by a X carrying sperm, then the zygote will have two X chromosomes and it'll develop into a female. If the sperm that's carrying the Y chromosome does the fertilization, then the resulting zygote will be X, Y, and it'll develop into a male. That's chromosomal sex determination in all of the mammals. The fact that half of the eggs will be fertilized by an X carrying sperm and half will be fertilized by a Y carrying sperm explains the fact that among the births in any mammal population, the initial ratio of males to females will be 50 50. Birds also have a chromosomal system of sex determination, but it's different. It's kind of a flipped version of the one in mammals. In birds, it's the egg that determines the chromosomal sex of the offspring. That's because the females have what we call a Z chromosome and a W chromosome. And during meiosis, half of the eggs will wind up being Z and half will be W. The females will pass on either that Z or W chromosome. The males have two Z chromosomes, so when they form their sperm, all of the sperm carry Z. Fertilization of a Z-carrying egg will lead to a male who's ZZ. Fertilization of a W-carrying egg will lead to a female who is ZW. That's chromosomal sex determination in birds. As in mammals, because half of the eggs will be Z eggs and half the eggs will be W eggs. The result is that among the initial births that happen in any bird population, half of those birds will be male and half of those birds will be female. Is AP Bio making you feel overwhelmed and inadequate? That's completely reasonable. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. The material is complex, the pace is brutal, and the vocabulary is ridiculous. But at learn-biology.com, we've created a way that makes it easier for you to study. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. 
See you on learn-biology.com. Among certain reptiles, sex is determined by the temperature at which the embryos develop. Some reptiles lay their eggs in a nest that's dug in the sand. And as you might imagine, it's warmer on the top, closer to the sun, and cooler down below. These animals develop based on a pivot point that's represented by TPIV over here. So in sea turtles, the eggs that develop above the pivot point become female. Here's the proportion of males over here. So if you're above the pivot point, if you're in the warmer area, you'll develop into a female. If you're in the cooler area over here, below the pivot point, you'll develop into a male. And then at the pivot point, it's pretty much random, 50-50. In another kind of reptile called a tuatara, it's the opposite. So basically, if you develop above the pivot point, then you have a higher chance of being a male. If you're below the pivot point, then the proportion of males goes down, you have a higher chance of being a female. And in crocodiles, there are two pivot points, a low temperature one and a high temperature one. In the coolest and the warmest temperatures, the eggs develop into females. In other words, the proportion male way down. But at intermediate temperatures over here, the eggs develop into males. How is sex determined in ants, bees, and wasps? This is completely mind-blowing. It's a system that's called haplodiploid sex determination or haplodiploidy. The males are haploid. They develop from unfertilized eggs. So here's a male here, haploid. The females which include the queen and all of the workers, they're all diploid and they develop from fertilized eggs. So the mother in a bee colony, just to use that example, is the queen. She undergoes normal meiosis when she creates her eggs, but the father is a haploid male, also called a drone, and he can't really do meiosis because he's haploid, he's not diploid. So essentially he passes on 100% of his chromosomes in the sperm that he creates. The consequence is that all the bees in a hive, with the exception of the drones, all of the worker bees are sisters, but they're more closely related to one another than any two mammal sisters are. Just think about it, mammal sisters inherit half their mom's genes, half of their dad's genes, so they're 50% related to one another, whereas these sisters inherit half of their mom's genes and 100% of their dad's genes, so they're 75% related to one another. They're more closely related to one another than they would be to their own offspring. So that is thought to be an explanation of why the workers cooperate with one another to help the queen create more offspring, to keep the hive going, to find food, all of these incredible foraging behaviors that you find in ants, wasps, and other social insects. But it's not a complete explanation because like, for example, the termites are also social, but they don't have this haplo haplodiploid system. So biology, amazing. This is as much as you need to know about haplodiploidy for the AP Bio exam. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.